Hi, I'm John Barron from Google Research, and I'll be talking about histogram thresholding. So first, some motivation. A while ago, I was working with some depth maps, and I wanted to automatically threshold them into a foreground part and a background part. While trying to figure out effective and simple ways to do this thresholding automatically, I found an interesting family of algorithms for automatic histogram thresholding. The basic idea behind these algorithms is that you turn the image into a histogram and then cut that histogram in half such that some objective is maximized. These techniques are widely used in document processing and medical imaging as a way to turn an image or a volume into a binary mask. The idea is that these binary masks are then used as input to some other algorithm like OCR or can be used to measure the volume or count of some biological specimen. Of course, in the modern era of deep learning, it's usually not a great idea to binarize your data before feeding it into some other algorithm because you're just throwing information away. So these techniques have stopped being used very much in the OCR community, where there's no shortage of data, and most effective algorithms are learning-based and just use raw pixels. However, in the uh, medical imaging community, these techniques are still incredibly popular. Atsu's method, which most people would regard as the go-to algorithm for this task, is used in several thousand biology or medical imaging papers each year. And this is because when you're dealing with medical imaging, you often don't have the option of collecting a ton of data and training a giant neural network to do your task. You might only have a handful of images. And in that context, it's helpful to just have simple algorithms that don't require any learning and just work and let you do basic things like count cells or measure the volume of an organ. But regardless of how useful these techniques might be, the thing that really attracted me to them was just that the math behind these classic algorithms can be really elegant and satisfying. Many of these algorithms rely on using cumulative sums over quantities weighted by the histogram to basically pre-compute different moments of the histogram, which you can do by just sweeping over the histogram in a single pass and recording a bunch of values as you go. Once you have these intervals, you can take advantage of two useful facts. First, the normalized cumulative sum at any given point is an expected value. And second, given an expectation of x and x squared, you can quickly compute the variance of x for an entire span of the histogram with just a little arithmetic. This means that in a single sweep over your histogram, you can pre-compute the percentage, the mean, and the variance of all spans of the histogram from the left-hand side to any point in the histogram, and similarly for the right-hand side. So this allows you to cut the histogram in half at any point and immediately know various things about the subsets of the histogram on either side of that cut, like their mean or their standard deviation or their distortion from the mean. So these algorithms all just work by doing a brute force scan over cuts and then returning the threshold that maximizes some objective. Here's what that process looks like for minimum error thresholding, which is a classic technique that works by approximately fitting a mixture of two Gaussians in 1D and returning the threshold that maximizes the likelihood of the data. For this image, it does something reasonable but not quite what we want. Uh, here's Otsu's method, which is a effectively a fast way of solving k-means in 2D, where k is equal to 2. This is probably one of the most effective classic algorithms for this task, and it does the right thing here. And here's a very straightforward baseline of just using the weighted percentile of the histogram, which is equivalent to taking a percentile of the raw pixel values. This approach is pretty widely used, but it's usually hard to set the target percentile to a value that works well across a large set of images. So these classic algorithms can have some really strange failure modes in situations you probably wouldn't expect. Here's a toy image and its histogram where it's pretty clear where the optimal threshold probably should be, uh, but both Atsu's method and MET pick really unexpected places to split the histogram in half. Atsu's method cuts the entire histogram in half right down the middle, and MET decides to use one of its Gaussians to model a single histogram bin and use its other Gaussian to model the entire rest of the histogram. So to fix this, uh, I just tried a somewhat straightforward approach of doing map estimation using a regularized mixture of Gaussians. There's nothing too fancy here. This is just a mixture of two Gaussians with a scaled inverse chi-square distribution used as a prior on the variance and a beta distribution used as a prior on the mixture probabilities. These are just typical conjugate priors you might use in this setting. In practice, the four parameters of those priors end up just being tunable hyperparameters for this algorithm. Using Jensen's inequality and the tricks I described earlier for using integrals to compute means and variances, you can optimize this objective very efficiently using just a single pass over the histogram. This is what the math for that looks like. And here it is written out in Python using NumPy. 
It's really simple, just 12 lines of code. Uh, and if you already have an implementation of Atsu's method or MET, you can modify it into this algorithm with just a couple of changes to a few lines. I end up calling this algorithm generalized histogram thresholding or GHT because it generalizes those classic algorithms that I described earlier. If you disable the priors in the mixture of Gaussians, it reduces to MET. If you impose a very strong conjugate prior on the variances to drive the posterior variances down to zero, then it exactly reduces to Atsu's method, just because a mixture of Gaussians with zero variance is equivalent to k-means. And if you increase the strength of the beta distribution, you reproduce the percentile algorithm, just because the mode of a beta distribution is a percentile. And another thing I observed is that you can think of the prior on variance as being approximately equivalent to blurring or coarsening the histogram before doing any thresholding. This is a really neat observation because in practice, a lot of practitioners manipulate the behavior of automatic thresholding algorithms by modifying the bin width of their histograms. And this equivalence shows that you don't need to do that here, uh, but also it might suggest that the reason people have historically used bin width as a tunable knob is because it gives them a sort of indirect control over an implicit conjugate prior on one of their model parameters. Uh, even though it's just a simple generalization of some very old past techniques, GHT generally results in significantly better performance than classic techniques. For example, on this toy image, GHT gives us the results we'd expect, where the foreground is cleanly separated from the background. So I evaluated GHT on a recent benchmark for image binarization, and I was surprised to see that it outperformed or matched the performance of the top performing techniques in that benchmark. Uh, it even outperforms large neural networks trained to produce per pixel binarizations, even though it's just binarizing all pixels by picking a single global threshold. And remember, this is just 12 lines of Python and four hyperparameters. And it's so fast to evaluate that the compute bottleneck for running it is actually constructing the input histogram itself. So here are some test set images from that benchmark. Here we have an input image, and here's the ground truth binarization. And here is an oracle binarization, which is the best possible binarization you could get if you cheated and looked at the true binarization, but limited yourself to only using a single global threshold for all pixels. I'm visualizing the output of this oracle algorithm by using red pixels for false negatives and blue pixels for false positives. And here's the output of Atsu's method, MET, and GHD. You can see that GHT is doing a significantly better job of separating out the true signal from the background. Here's a visualization of the histogram of the image where foreground pixels are rendered in a darker color and the cuts of each algorithm are rendered alongside the Oracle cut. You can see that the cut location for GHT is much closer to the Oracle location than the two baselines. Here's another scene from the test set visualized in the same way. And here's another scene from the test set. And that's it. Thanks for watching.